returned to Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites of Bethlehem and Judah, and they went into the country of Moab and lived there for a while. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and so she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives, the name of the one Orpah, and the other Ruth. And they lived there in Moab about ten years, and then Malon and Kilian died, so that the woman was left without her husband or her two sons. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her two daughters-in-law began to prepare to return home. And so she and her daughters-in-law set out, left the place where they had been living, and set out on the road that would return them to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you to the home of your mother, and may the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with your dead and with me. May the Lord grant that you find rest, each of you, in the home of another husband. And then she kissed them. And then they wept bitterly. And they said to her, No, no, we, we will return with you to your people. But she said to them, Go back, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Have I yet sons that they may become your husbands? Go back, my daughters. For I am too old to have a husband. Even if I should say that there's still hope for me. Even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait until they are grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter for me that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. This they wept bitterly, and Orpah, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. And Naomi said to her, you see, your sister-in-law has returned to her God and to her people. Go, return after her. But Ruth said to Naomi, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. And where you die, there I will die. And there I will be buried. And may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severe, if anything but death, Separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said no more. And so the two women continued on to Bethlehem. And when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women in the town said, Could this be Naomi? And Naomi said to them, do not call me Naomi. You call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Almighty has testified against me, and El Shaddai has brought this misery upon me? So Naomi returned to Bethlehem, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law. And they returned at the beginning of the barley harvests. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, named Boaz. And one day Ruth, the Moabite, said to her mother-in-law, let me go out in the fields and pick up a leftover grain after anyone in whose eyes I might find favor. And Naomi said to her, go, my daughter. So Ruth went out into the fields and began to glean and gather. 
And it so happened that she found herself in the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. <coughs> Just then, Boaz came in from, Beth from Bethlehem, and he greeted his harvesters, saying, The Lord be with you. And they answered, saying, The Lord bless you. And then Boaz asked his foreman, who was in charge of the harvesters, Whose young woman is that? And the foreman in charge of the harvesters said, She is the young Moabite woman who returned from Moab with Naomi. She came and she said, Please may glean and gather after the harvesters. And so she went in the field and she has worked from early morning until just now with just a little rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen. Do not go in another field and don't work in another field from here, but let your eyes be on the field where my harvesters are working and go after my servant girls. I've told the young men not to touch you. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're thirsty, go. Go and get a drink from the, from the jars the men have drawn. At this, Ruth bowed low with her face to the ground and said, how have I found such favor in your eyes, my lord, that you should take notice of me, a servant? And Boaz said to her, All that you have done since the death of your husband for your mother-in-law has been fully told to me. How you left your father and your mother and your native land, and you came to a people you did not know before. May the Lord reward you for your kindness. May you be rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my lord, she said. For you, you have comforted me, and you have spoken kind words to your servant's heart, though I, I don't even have the standing of one of your servant girls. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come, come and have some bread and dip your morsel in the wine vinegar. And when she was seated among the harvesters, he passed to her some roasted grain. And she ate until she was satisfied, and she had food left over. When she rose to glean again, Boaz instructed his young men, saying, Even if she gleans from among the sheaves, do not embarrass her. But rather, pull some out from the bundles, and leave it for her to gather, and do not rebuke her. So Ruth continued to glean until evening. And when she threshed out all that she had gleaned, it amounted to about an ephah. And she gathered it up, and she carried it back to her mother-in-law. And her mother-in-law saw all that she had gleaned. And then Ruth brought out and gave her the food she had left over after being satisfied. mother-in-law said to her, Where did you work today? In whose field did you glean? God bless the man who took notice of you. So then Ruth said to her mother-in-law, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. The Lord bless him, said Naomi to her daughter-in-law, for he has not forsaken the living or the dead. Then Naomi added, Boaz is a relative of ours, a kinsman redeemer. Well then Ruth said to her mother-in-law, also told me that I should stay close to his harvesters until they have finished harvesting all of his grain. <laughs> it is good, my daughter, that you should stay with his harvesters, unless in another field you can be assaulted. So Ruth continued with the harvesters of Boaz until the end of the barley and wheat harvest. 
and she continued living with her mother. <coughs> One day, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, My daughter, should I not find rest for you, that it may be well with you in your own home? And is not Boaz, with whose young women you've been, a relative of ours? See, tonight he is winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Wash, therefore, perfume yourself, put on your finest clothes, and then go to the threshing floor. But do not let the man know that you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. And then observe the place where he lies down. Uncover his feet, and then lie down. He will tell you what to do. So Ruth said to her mother-in-law, For all that you've said, I will do. And Ruth went to the threshing floor. <coughs> and after the man had finished eating and drinking, and his heart was merry, he went to the far end of the heap of grain, and he lay down. And then Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. At midnight, something startled the man, and he turned. Then a woman was laying at his feet. Who are you? He said. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, for you are a kinsman redeemer. And Boaz said to her, May the Lord bless you, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than your first, in that you have not gone after younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, it is true that I am a kinsman redeemer. And do not be afraid, I will do all for you that you ask, though there is one nearer than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he will redeem you, good. Let him. But if he will not redeem you, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Stay here until morning. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until morning, but arose before one could recognize another. For Boaz said to her, Do not let it be known that a woman came to the threshing room floor. He also said to her, Bring me the shawl that you are wearing and hold it out. And so she did. And he measured six measures of barley and put it on her. And then he went back to town. Ruth came back to Naomi, her mother-in-law. And Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, So how did it go, my daughter? <laughs> and Ruth told her all the man had done for her. And she added, He also gave me these six measures of barley, for, for he told me I should not come home to my mother-in-law empty-handed. And Naomi said to her, Just wait, my daughter, until you see what happens, for the man will not rest until he settles the matter today. Meanwhile, Boaz had gone to the town gate and sat down. And when the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came by, he said to him, Turn aside, friend, and sit here. So he did. And then he took ten of the town elders and told them to sit here. And they did. And then Boaz said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi is selling a piece of property that belonged to our relative, Elimelech. Thought I'd bring this matter to your attention here and in the witness in the presence of these elders here and in the elders of my people. Um, suggest that you should buy this property. Um, but if you won't, tell me that I may know. For you're the only one who has a right, and I, I come next in line. And then the kinsman redeemer said, I'll redeem it. And so Boaz told him, the day that you purchase this land from the hand of Naomi and Ruth the Moabite, you also acquire the dead man's widow as your wife to, to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Well, this the kinsman redeemer said, well, I can't redeem it lest I endanger my own estate. Redeem it for yourself, for I can't do it. 
Now, in those days in Israel, the method of legalizing and finalizing a transaction was that one party would remove his sandal and give it to the other. So when the kinsman redeemer said, buy it for yourself, he removed his sandal and gave it to Boaz. And Boaz announced to all those there, today you are witnesses. I have purchased from the hand of Naomi all that belong to Elimelech and Malon and Kilian. I have also acquired Ruth, the Moabite, the widow of Malon, to be my wife, to maintain his name with his property, and so that his name will not be forgotten among his family or forgotten among the town records. Today you are witnesses. And all the people gathered there said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May the Lord make your, may your name be famous in Ephrathah. May you be, have great standing in Israel. And may the Lord make your children, the line of your family, like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went to her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she bore a son. And the women, the women in the town, they said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who has not left you this day without a kinsman redeemer. Oh, he... He shall, he shall restore your age, your, he shall restore your youth and sustain you in your old age. And Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and cared for him. And the women, women gave him the name Obed, and they said, Naomi has a son. Obed was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This, then, is the line of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amenadab. Amenadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz. Boaz, the father of Obed. Obed, the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David. And King David the ancestor of Jesus Christ. 